Okay, so uh, what this is is a gesture drawing, and uh, they typically take anywhere from, uh, they've taken as short as 30 seconds, they can take as long as uh, arguably five minutes, but usually two to three minutes. And the idea is not to overwork it, the idea is to capture the essence of the pose quickly. You respond to the model almost with a sense of urgency, as if they're gonna, if they're gonna move. And uh, by doing this, you get lines that are gestural and alive and full of energy versus if you started your drawing and you came in and just started noodling with the eyebrow and what have you, hoping to get a good entire uh, image in there um, to look lifelike. Uh, the gesture drawing is more or less, you know, the, the lifeblood of life drawing because if you start with a stiff drawing, your drawing stays stiff. If you start with a loose drawing, you can always come in and modify. You can always come in and uh, measure. You can always come in and sight. You can always, you know, get obviously more structure, uh, more bony landmarks, etc. But it really does begin with this. And um, a couple of things going on here. One is uh, I'm drawing with a drawing pencil right now. But whether you're drawing with Conte or charcoal or a drawing pencil or, or you know, whatever drawing tool you're drawing with, you want to use the side and the point, or, or, or the edge anyway, you know, the side and the edge. You don't want to have a pencil that you sharpen with a pencil sharpener, uh, and then you just draw them with the point of the pencil, because those lines will have no character. Um, these lines, uh, when you have thick and thin lines, it, it adds more of a sense of volume to your drawing. Um, also with gesture drawing, you can't be afraid to put lines where there are none because you're searching, you know, that's the whole idea, is, is you're coming through here and trying to, to figure out what's going on without staying on the outside contour and making, you know, pretty much an outline Gumby. Um, the other thing you never wanna do is make short hairy lines when you're doing this. You know, they're, they're broad gestural lines and you kind of live with the drawing. You live with what you put down. I've done gesture drawings before that I thought, you know, I wanted to frame, and I've done some before where I was like, how quickly can I throw this one away? Um, this drawing, though, with the model, I could, you know, I could work on this and get it and move it even further along. So in future demonstrations, I'll be showing how to add value and then uh, pastels with pastel paper and such. But it really does start with this. And something else I need to point out with gesture drawing, and I only have one indication of this really with this drawing, and that. It's what we call drawing through. Um, you never want to have a drawing where you start a form, stop when it's behind another form, and then start again. I drew this arm right on top of this neck where the chest is coming down here. I drew the arm right on top of it. So don't be afraid to put lines where there are none, and don't be afraid to draw through and draw right on top of forms. If, if you do this where you start, stop, and then start again, it has a real sense of disconnect. You know, you can get rid of lines later that you don't want. You can come through here and make all the adjustments you want, but initially you have to get the gesture down. Thank you. Uh, one more aspect I want to point out about this particular drawing is uh, I drew her on uh, newsprint, uh, which is inexpensive drawing paper because, you know, you can do a lot of gesture drawings. You can, you know, if you do... Um, 20 one minute drawings, that's 20 pieces of paper, you know, so, so, so uh, that's one of the reasons we do it on newsprint. But this paper eventually falls apart, which is a sad thing about it. It's, it's kind of a nice uh, surface to work on. Uh, but I fit her on the page. Um, I, you know, prefer to draw big. Now, after you learn how to draw the form nice and big, fitting the form on the page, you can, you can start figuring out how to draw small as well because it's important to know how to do both. But to develop your gestural lines and to, to give your drawings a sense of energy, the more you can use your shoulder and your elbow and, and, and you know, your whole body to be drawn with because this is just an extension of the rest of your body, you know, what, holding the pencil. Um, you, you know, when, when you get all that going, uh, it, it's so much easier to, to achieve that when you're working large. If you're working small until you get more experience, it's hard to stay loose and at the same time get the drawing you want. So uh, besides fitting her on the page, if this were to be a finished drawing, and who's to say a gesture drawing isn't, but if this were to be a finished drawing, 
Um, you want to have a good relationship of positive or negative space on your page. So this is the figure, the positive space, and the negative space is everything surrounding her, and they share a symbiotic relationship. That is, the edge of her rib cage is sharing the same edge with this with this negative space in the paper, etc. So the space around her and between is just as significant as the form itself. So when you're placing someone on a page, when you're making any kind of a drawing, you want to consider how it's fitting into your format. So in this case, it's an 18 by 24 page. So I'm, you know, fitting her into that format. Once again, there's nothing wrong with doing small drawings, but I think to learn how to do this stuff, bigger's better because you learn how to draw with your body. Um, and then learning to fit the model on the page is a real great skill. And one other thing, I usually start with a head. I usually start with a head and work down from there. And, and by doing this on a regular basis, I know how pretty much I'm going to be able to fit the model on the piece of paper uh, through repetition. I'll start with what we call the cranium here and the mandible, you know, the, the, uh, the skull here, you know, the necks overlapping it. And then, then I'll work from there. There's, there's um, three main masses the uh, vertebrae is attached to. Uh, one's the head and then uh, the rib cage and then the pelvis. All three of those, those are the, 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 big, the big masses in the body. All three of them are attached to it. So understanding the flow and the direction of those masses uh, is important. Okay, thanks for listening.